Hey people, so I don't usually tangle with mods, but this time I thought I'd make an exception because this mod is something special in my opinion. The mod being Atmospheric Physics by a chap on the workshop called Drago. And uh, yeah, what it does is that it adds atmospheric drag and lift and the heating uh, to spaciousness. It has its quirks, but uh, it works pretty well. So let's just take off in this disc. Aircraft has two thrusters, and uh, that's about it. The rest are just rotors and armor acting as control surfaces. And uh, yeah, that is basically what you can do. Well, not basically. You can do a lot with this mod, but that is uh, my takeaway at least. So what this script is about is, uh, well, it's what allows me to control the plane. It is sort of like my hinge piston rotor control script, but uh, also quite different. So, the first goal was to have the surfaces center themselves. So when I let go of our control input, the rotor will center itself. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it. Uh, and that, that was kind of the first goal, but then it turned into a lot more. As you notice, if I was installing my craft by wobbling around, um, when I fly, my control surfaces kind of wobble on their own. That is fully intentional. So if we try to make a roll here, and I let go of the control, the plane stops rotating. Same with pitch. I let go, it flies pretty much straight forward. That is, uh, well, that's the stabilization. That's also what makes this plane able to fly, because it is pretty dang unstable with the elevator in front. Uh, so it has been my test bed for this entire script. So basically the script looks at rotation, how fast are rotating and tries to make that zero. When you put a uh, make control input, you offset that value. So even though it's zero, the script may think it's five, minus five, whatever, and it starts rotating, but only to a certain amount. And that also adds a ton of inherent stability, uh, where direct inputs would just make the whole thing flip end over end. And the second goal was to make the whole thing easy to set up. So I think this mod is really awesome. I think it is quite fun to make planes like this in various shapes and sizes. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to get something working, you know, with the existing control and space engineers. So I wanted something that was easy to set up and this is basically it is group based so it's groups of rotors one for ailerons one for elevators one for rudders and that's practically it uh, and if you want to add more rotors you just add them to the group recompile the script and the whole thing works to show that sort of in action i got another version of this plane i think we should take a look at so we're going to pop back to the base all right so same airframe different design this time when i use my ailerons and my elevators we got this third wing like flexing of the wings sort of uh, using a bunch of rotors uh, i think it looks really neat it actually makes the design a lot more stable and uh, serves as a good demonstration because setting this up versus setting up the other one with a single rotor is practically the same. The only difference is you add more rotors to your block group and then the script has the rest. The script will check whether a uh, rotor is uh, on the left or the right in the case of ailerons uh, or in front or rear of the aircraft in case of elevators and uh, well it'll act accordingly so you don't really have to worry about that you don't have to use any special naming or anything like that you just add rotors to the group and Recompile the script and it'll work. Um, and the basic setup, the initial setup, is also quite simple. If we just put down over here on the lake, I can give a quick rundown of how the script is set up and yeah, how little it actually takes to get basic functionality up and running. Um, go all right so I have all my rotors in groups so for the ailerons I got a bunch of rotors you can see no special names no nothing just add 
the relevant rotors into a group. One for ailerons, one for elevators, and one for rudders. Uh, yeah, they were there. Right, so in the setup of the script itself, we got the controller, just like my other script. Um, that's your cockpit, your remote control, your seat, doesn't matter which, just one of those. And that'll be where you control the craft from. If you input a wrong name or no name, it'll grab the first thing it can find on the grid and it'll inform you of such. If there are no controllers on the grid, it'll well crash and give you an error, but it'll tell you that it, well that is what is wrong. And for the groups of the ailerons, the elevators and the rudders, these go in here, in the relevant, uh, between the quotation marks. And uh, yeah, um, final step for a simple setup at least is to map the inputs. So one for pitch, two for roll, three for yaw. Just input it at the relevant control. Keep in mind, as with the other script, I am not reading the actual AD keys or WS keys. AD is the standard for left, right, uh, WS, forward, backward, etc. And it is the control input I'm reading. So if you have rebound left, right to something else, that else is what you're going to have to be using to use that input. Anyhow, uh, change the number to whatever uh, output you want it to work on. You can use the same number two places and have two outputs, two inputs going to one output. If you so desire, any number apart from 1, 2, 3 will result in that output or that input being disabled. For basic functionality, uh, and uh, well, that is it. That's all you have to set up. Now, a bit more advanced are the numbers down here. So, the D is how hard the plane works to cancel its own rotation. Too high a number here will make the plane wobble because it's overcorrecting. Too low a number will, will remove the correction. Uh, do not input zero because uh, well that'll crash the script. But yeah, there's a middle ground because if you have, you know, a high number but not too high, so it's not wobbling but it'll still dampen your inputs uh, and make not make your plane as snappy. And on that account, the next three are multipliers for the various axes, pitch, yaw, and roll. Uh, if your control is too slow, too sluggish, increase the number. If it is too rapid, too sensitive, decrease the number. If you feel a uh, surface is going in the wrong direction in regards to what you want with the way you're moving your controls, just pop a minus in front to uh, invert the direction. You can also invert uh, a single rotors or hinges direction by adding ref uh, in its custom data. The last two are max deflection and pitch comp, pitch compensation. Uh, basically, the script, as I said, looks at how fast you're rotating and tries to make that zero. That is sometimes not enough, especially with particularly unstable craft. So what this input does is that it adds something to the pitch that looks at uh, the rate of change of rotation. So not just how fast are rotating, but how fast is the rotation increasing or decreasing. And uh, adds another compensation to, to hopefully stabilize your pitch direction. The sign in front of this should match the sign in front of pitch multiplier. Uh, don't put this value to 1, because then it'll cancel all your rotation. Uh, you can go without it, you can put it to 0, that's fine, that'll just remove the extra and it will make your controls more snappy, more responsive. But it will remove a bit of stabilization. And the max deflection is the max deflection of well, all your control surfaces. So right now it's at 40, that means plus minus 40 degrees when I use any control surface. If I were to change that to something crazy like, say, a hundred degrees, we would get instead something like that. So a lot more reflection. Uh, sadly, though it looks pretty cool, I think, uh, it also means that we actually get less authority because the, the, the individual control surfaces will start to stall out. So yeah, it looks neat, but not very practical sadly enough but uh, yeah that is all i have for the script actually i'm gonna be adding links in the description of this video to this script of course also this uh, specific airplane because i think it is a pretty neat um, well 
demo vehicle for both the mod and for the script. I am running a world right now with a max speed of a thousand meters per second. I think with the mod the standard is 150. Uh, the other plane works fine on 150. Uh, I would assume that this one does too, apart from moving a lot slower, but uh, it should fly. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that I am flying using a Xbox One controller and that just uh, makes for smoother experience, but the plane is basically set up to fly with mouse and keyboard. Uh, with mouse for the roll and uh, pitch, and W for thrust, AD for the rudders. And it is very flyable, it may be reacting a bit too rapidly, but uh, yeah, you can fiddle with the values if it's uncontrollable, and otherwise use the controller. Uh, and I am, of course, also going to be adding a link to the mod, to the aerodynamic physics by Drago, because that is what makes this entire script have any point, as well as the video. And I just think it is an amazing mod. Uh, as I said, keep in mind it has quirks in regards to how aerodynamics is calculated, but considering that it's a mod and not a part of the game, it is absolutely amazing work, I think. Uh, the script should also work with other mods that add uh, control surfaces, uh, so doesn't add you know complete atmospheric physics, but just uh, like winglets and stuff that produce thrust, uh, well lift I guess. Uh, it should work with those as well. I've tested it, but I don't see a why not because the principle is the same. So uh, yeah. If you have any suggestions to, well, I don't know, stuff that needs fixing uh, in the script, stuff that's not intuitive, or how to set up, or stuff you'd like to see added, uh, feel free to comment either in the description below or on the workshop. Uh, I'll do my best to reply in a good time, and uh, if I think it makes sense, I'll totally implement it. So uh, yeah, that is all. Thank you for watching, and uh, see ya.